Oh, buddy. Easy. This is a kind of a different sight to see. Like that's nice and tender. That's very palatable for them. But they said, hey, we love bison. We would love to have bison on our property. Look at the big guy over there waiting on me. Got it. He's got the goods right here. We're coming to see a Big Joe. Give me just a minute. Big Joe and I also want to thank our sponsor today, Factor. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Customers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Big Joe, when we pulled up here, was all by himself. Got me worried for a little bit. But he's just wanting some alone time, I guess. And wanting cubes first, so that's what we're going to do right now. This is a kind of a different sight to see. Is, ugh, he dropped some cubes here, buddy. Is Big Joe up here all by himself. Either uh, breeding season must be over, or I don't know. He's just wanting some alone time to himself since he's the only male. And here comes one right here. She's not wasting time. 54. Jumper. So give me some cubes before anybody gets here. Hey guys, all right, we just got back to the Ponderosa headquarters. We're gonna go show you something here in just a second. I gotta do a little um, treatment on Cora. We're gonna go somewhere and I'll show you guys something that may be pretty good for us. We're gonna take you along that and show you where we're going and we're gonna talk about it when we get there and kind of what's the point of it. And so we have some good things coming for us and I wanna show that to you guys. Before we head out, I wanna show you how our sponsor hooked us up today. As a former coach and teacher, I honestly wish I could have had these for lunch. These are super easy. These would have been perfect because you don't have to take time to go to the grocery store. This comes straight to your door. No prep, no mess. It's heat and eat two minutes. This is fresh, never frozen meals. We've already told some of our friends about it and I've already got them on it as well. We got cheesy bacon, shredded chicken, mushrooms, broccoli, couple pokes. Two to three minutes, you can have a very quick and healthy meal. Factor not only makes these quick and easy, healthy meals, got cold press juices and smoothies, and they're so good. Easy, grab on the go, and super tasty as well. This is an, an incredible lunch, guys. Shredded chicken, I mean, look at this. I'm eating this for lunch. No time spent in the grocery store, no fast food. Fast food is convenient and easy for us, so we fall victim to that, but thanks to Factor, we can eat healthier. That was an amazing lunch. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code BISON50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. We are at uh, somebody else's property today. 
I want to talk to you about something that's going on out here. So I kind of got a little story to tell you. I know I tell lots of stories, right? That's just how we do things. But this is about relationships here on this one because uh, my mom and Kevin, my mom really has two friends that she met uh, within the past year or so. And great people, they got this property in Sulphur. We're about 10 minutes north of the Ponderosa. And uh, I got Cole and Marissa with me and Maya. Uh, but the thing is, is what's going on is I got to know this couple. They bought a new place, they got a home on it, and then there's 120 acres total, which is what I'm standing on right now. There was cattle out here, their neighbor, um, used to graze this with his cattle. They said, hey, we don't farm, we don't ranch, <laughs> but we like bison. And so that was kind of the t talk. Hey, we love bison. We would love to have bison on our property. And I said, hmm, well, with all the situations uh, going on at the Ponderosa with having Dunbar and Big Joe in the same place, uh, the drought, of course, and... And personally, I think now we have too many animals. Um, more to explain on that. All that was going on, and I've been looking for more land to graze, um, possibly buy or lease. This couple says, hey, we'd love to have bison out there. You do what you want with the land, take care of it. You know, all those things, we just want the bison. And I said, okay. Make a good fishing pole. Well, that's how you get a big one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, then that happens. Unless you get one of these fresh ones. Looks like corn stock. Boy, I'd hate to get a whooping off of this. This would hurt. You never did? Not a cane. We didn't have cane where I was from. <laughs> or bamboo. Yeah. <laughs> Canis, I guess sugar. People may get that confused. So here's a here's a fence that may need some love. You found it. Yeah. We talked about it. Me and the owner talked about it. So I'll show you something in a second, but right behind us is a uh, one of their Johnson grass um, hay pastures. But here this happens in Oklahoma a lot, um, and I guess lo lots of places, but uh, we've got a creek that runs through the property, just like the Ponderosa, and of course, um, that's where a lot of your hardwood trees are. We've got some pecan trees right here underneath us. We've got some oaks that run across these um, or go along with these creeks. Well, sometimes for your hay pastures, uh, you got to put a, f a fence before they get to the creek so you're not dealing with creek crossings and your animals getting out through the creeks, which we've had that problem before. So this, uh, this would have been good enough for bison, but I don't know what that would hold right now. So this would be something that we'd have to look at. He says that there's a fence on the other side of the creek too. So they've got this on the inside and then there's another one on the outside and i think the other one on the outside is his neighbor and his property goes up to the neighbor so creek crossings or creeks where the fence cross can be a problem potentially so what would be right here your solution to like all this because usually at the ponderosa you just doze all this out yeah but would you move the fence line up or you're gonna have to rip all this out again and well yeah, you could, or we could hot wire around it um, where they don't even come in here. You could hot wire the edge of the pasture. Um, and then you just think in your mind that that's just, that's not the primary source to keep them in. It's a secondary source. So that if they get through the hot wire, then they still have to get through the primary perimeter fence, right. if that makes sense. That's kind of what Maybe. I look at, but like, I'm not the landowner, but I know he would be on board. We'd be like, okay, get a bulldozer and clean this. Now that's expensive if you're leasing the land, obviously, but 
ideally you would like to just put a new fence here, but we're gonna try to practice with some hot wire. And, um, but if your border, if the fence that you share with your neighbor is in good shape, it's something that you can count on in case they get out of a hot wire. As long as there's something at that end of the creek. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, creek. at the end of the creeks too. That's, that's uh, good. And, you know, every time it floods, you got to come check it and make sure, especially if your animals are in that pasture. So, for sure. It's an old cow bones right there, cow body. I'd rather play with the sticks than the bones. <laughs> yeah, you would. So out here, this has been a Johnson grass field for quite a while. And some guys like to just cut, cut it for hay, and that's what they've been doing here. But when we came out and looked at it, it looked like this everywhere when we first came to look at it, and they talked to us about putting our bison on it. This is what it looked like. I mean, that Johnson grass is taller than me. You can see there's a pasture there, this pasture here. So we're kind of on the bigger portion of their property. Like I said, it was all Johnson grass. Johnson grass is not the best grass um, for your property. It's not the best hay either. Johnson grass is very invasive and it can take over quickly. And, uh, Obviously with no management, like on this place, when they didn't have it, they just let the Johnson grass keep growing and they'd cut it and cut it and cut it. And it almost, just, it almost encourages it to keep coming back. Um, I do see a little bit of native grass here. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Maybe a little blue stem. Maybe it's been cut and it's going into dormancy. But if you don't manage the Johnson grass, then it'll just keep growing and growing and being super invasive. But the idea is to graze this hard, according to the NRCS, Cole Fagan, Ethan McJames that I work with all the time, did the burn unit with. You can graze this for three years hard and you can get rid of Johnson grass. And so the whole idea about converting this to bison land, native land, is by turning this into native grass, which is what we want. You bring back the native, get rid of the Johnson grass, type of grass that's invasive. Uh, bison don't like to eat it. They will eat it if it's palatable, like this stuff right here. It was brush hogged. Like that's nice and tender. Like I would munch on that right now. It's super soft, tender. May not have a lot to it because of the drought and the lack of rainfall. But um, with this size of it, that's very palatable for them to reach down there and grab because they don't have any uh, teeth on their top, right? Just the bottom teeth. So they have that big, tough lip that can come down here and clip that, right? And still leave some room there. Uh, but this would be palatable for them to eat. And if you grazed it hard for, according to those guys, three years, you could convert this back into native grass, which is also great for the soil and also good for the water look at all that bamboo i know this kind of seems funny but you've got a field that was seven eight foot tall full of johnson grass it was cut it was cut about i don't know three weeks ago or so we had just a little bit of rainfall and that's what this little growth is here and i hadn't been out here in a while but johnson grass is kind of a or what would you call that a little bit of a nemesis yes because last year hardcore drought johnson grass we learned uh, became very poisonous there's two things that go on when you have a hardcore drought and a plant like johnson grass forms um, prusic acid down into the bottom of the plant or nitrates as it nitrates i believe uh, poison the animals can consume this and that's what happened last year we had a heifer from one of our South Dakota heifers must have found some Johnson grass in pasture too. And when she consumed it, it didn't take her long. I, when I found her, she was already struggling. And when I say struggling, she was suffocating basically. Um, 
because it attacks the oxygen in their blood. She died within, I don't know, six, seven, eight hours of consuming Johnson grass. And it was a thing going on in Murray County uh, because of the high concentration um, from the drought was causing this nitric acid um, in the plant. And then if it rained, the prusic acid comes up. I'm not very good at explaining, but that's what I do understand now, knowing because we lost a heifer from it. She basically suffocated from consuming poison. So now I'm out here talking about grazing Johnson grass to get rid of it. Now, this is something that I've learned from Cole Fagan and Ethan is, um, I said, how do you get rid of Johnson grass? And he said, graze it hard for three years. And so right now, uh, what I, what we could do is we could pick some up um, and we could take a sample to them, uh, to the extension office, and they'll actually look at it. And I did this already once this summer, but so far in Murray County, there hadn't been reported um, fatalities from prusic acid from eating Johnson grass. You know, it's difficult. There's already not very much grass during a drought, and then they consume Johnson grass, which is, which is not their preferred grass they want the native grass and then they die from it you know with situations like that so now in this the way to get rid of it ironically ironically you got to graze it to get rid of it now during a drought it would be kind of questionable to come out here and drop our bison off and eat this It'd be a great time like i explained about it being palatable for them to eat, it's nice and tender, right? All that fresh regrowth. But at the same time, that fresh regrowth could have that prusic acid in it, sitting there, and they consume it, and we could have a whole bunch of dead bison. It, it happens uh, It happens a lot um, in this country. And obviously during a drought, I, something that I, we just learned. Kind of a funny thing there, but when you're not in a drought, I wouldn't worry about it near as much. So, but if we did want to test it, we could, uh, we could just take some samples of it and you, could, you can just basically take, take this portion to them and uh, there's a guy at the extension office who can run his little test on it and he can see and he can tell me if it's got prusic acid built up in it or not. And uh, they can do that very quick. So if you're in this situation where you're in a pretty hard drought, and you've got Johnson grasses can be poisonous, you know, for something like this. Because if it rains, that prusic acid can come up into that root system or come up low into the stem. And you can find it there. And uh, that's what they're going to be grazing. So if they get a hold of it, they could suffocate and die from it. So that's more than likely what happened at Heifer is they were eating every type of grass they could. And then it was that drought was so hard that prusic acid came up and when she came back to eat it she just happened to be the one that ate it and apparently doc says that once they start eating it they don't they don't like to stop it like makes them want to keep mm. eating it and once they get too much of it it you know it it's too much and it'll suffocate them that is the interesting thing though that it only happened to one and only one exhibit only one. symptoms of sickness even yeah there was a guy last summer that lost a whole bunch of cattle um this year i've heard that sumac oh, what did he say sudan sorry in in our in our county a guy had trouble lost some cows killed a bunch of them as soon as he let them in the pasture and they thought it was johnson grass but it was sudan that he had planted was carrying too what type much of grass is that is it it's a it's not a native grass or nothing it's just something that you can plant like rye or alfalfa or something that you okay. can plant he planted it and when he rotated them in there by the time they figured it out he couldn't even get them unloaded or couldn't get them out of that pasture fast enough they started dying mm. that happened uh three or four weeks ago just from just from uh, that Sudan. Now Sudan's not something that would just naturally grow, but this guy apparently um, planted it. And you know, think about how happy they'd be in a new pasture and they're just whoo, 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 yeah. scarfing it down, like, you know, being your favorite burger place. It's like, yeah, you just think it's grass. <laughs> you think it's just harmless. You know, just downing it. And then all of a sudden, just I couldn't get them out of the pasture fast Yikes. enough to kill them.
Look at this little sassy, sassy horse. She is for sure. She's easy. You won't hurt yourself. Jeez. She's all getting. She's a little anxious because she's been pinned up. She's been able to roam a little bit. Oh, maybe in an acre or two, not much. Hey, calm down. Okay. She's uh, she's anxious to get out and go. What? Get back. So, <laughs> we are excited to help um, some landowners, some people that are excited about bison as well, um, to try to improve their land and uh, clean it up, do some improvements on it, uh, maybe with, work with the NRCS, Cole Fagan and Ethan again, uh, just on a different property. Uh, you know, 120 acres, 100 acres is not a lot of land. We know that. We couldn't put a lot of bison on it, but it would help us and uh, it would it would be beneficial for them um, also to improve their land and get new fencing and stuff like that. You're just, you raise the value of your property when you build a fence and then you clean it up and uh, you know, remove cedar and do all those things. You improve the property you're land in. So we can help them do that and have bison on the land and we get to graze as well and have a little bit more room so that the Ponderosa can have um, more time to recover and things like that. That's kind of the whole goal of this. We're going to keep talking to you more. We've got some uh, stuff coming up that we're going to um, do to about stocking rates. We're going to talk and learn about stocking rates and stuff like that. Um, so, still got some work to do. We got some things to kind of finalize uh, with that property and whatnot. But um, we're excited to. You know possibly take some of our bison over there. i think it'd be it'd be fun for them uh some more grazing room uh for some of our animals which means we'd probably have to split some up so it'll be an ongoing subject don't start freaking out and stuff on us I promise uh but in the meantime i want to thank factor for sponsoring today's video you guys can click the link below where you can go to factor75.com don't forget to use the code bison50 and you can receive 50 percent off your first order of factor Ugh, I'm gonna have to walk this girl around a little bit. Thank you guys. We'll see you guys soon.